Hi everyone, it's Lynn. And once again, I do apologise for the light. I know there's a lot of shadows, but unfortunately here in the UK, we are having horrible weather. It's grey, it's dark, it's cold, it's, it's windy, raining. It's just horrible. So I do apologise for the shadows. I have adjusted my lights and this is the best I can get it. So hopefully you can all see. So today I'm going to show you how to make a lovely little cracker gift box. I have purposely left the centre long so you can fit plenty in there and I've done shorter ends. This can be adjusted quite easily and you can have larger ends, a shorter section in the middle and another longer end. But I've done it this way so that you can get plenty in in the actual box. I'm hoping that um, a little bottle of alcohol and a couple of little chocolates are going to fit in there. If not, you can always gift a bottle of the moon dust um, because that will that'll fit in there no problem. So it's very easy to make. It's featuring the fabulous Lavinia Stamps Dreamscape papers again because I just love working with them. So I will just pop that to one side. And all you need to do is choose your, your paper. I'm going for um, this one. And this is the full 8x8, eight eight, but we need to take off half an inch on one of the sides but again I urge you look at what can work on the paper for you so I thought these might look nice on the cracker ends as just a bit more interest so whichever way up you're going to do along the length you need to remove half an inch okay and then taking our scoreboard now I must apologise because I work in inches. I can't I can't do centimetres, so I am very sorry. But we are going sorry, we are going to score at one and three quarters, at three and a half, at five and five and a quarter. I've already pre-scored this and at seven. Then you're going to rotate and you're going to score at an inch, one and a half and two. Then we're going to score, no no, we're going to rotate it, sorry, and repeat that. So we're going to go at one inch, at one and a half and at two. Get rid of your your scoreboard and you're just going to fold and burnish each of those score lines. And then where you've scored with the inch, inch and a half and two, we are going to fold away from us on the two inch mark, burnish towards and away. Turn round, do the same at the other end. So you're going to do two inches away towards and then away. So it gives you the little valley and mountain, mountain folds. Now, although this paper um, is 150 GSM, it's not quite strong enough on its own to form the cracker and to hold its shape well. So you've got two options. You can either back it with a piece of card to give it some some strength or you can do what I'm going to do 
which I'm going to use my one of my favourite techniques to do. I'm going to laminate it on one on one side. So, oops, one second. I didn't get a piece of copy paper. Sorry. So, if you're going to make two of these, then obviously you can put them back to back. But if you're only going to do one, then just pop a piece of copy paper in there. And then pop your, your cracker in on, with the side you want laminating facing, facing out. Now I am using matte um, a matte laminating sheet here. Um, recently discovered them. Absolutely love the effect that they get. They they give because it's a nice flat, flat um, finish. I also think it enhances the paper. So just feed it through. Do check though, most laminators go through the front, mine goes through the back, so don't try and get, get it to go through the back if it's a front loading one. So just send it through. And it's starting to come out and you can see it, it just, I think, I think it's just beautiful, it gives a beautiful feel. And I think it really, really works well with these papers. So I just need this to come through. Nearly there. off and then taking your scissors just cut as close as you can to the edge of the paper you can if you want do it on your trimmer trying to do it as quickly as I can but I do suggest you take take your time it's very easy to slip off and cut into your paper so do okay, take your time see I've skidded off there, there go last one and this just it just gives it some stability and gives you a much firmer, firmer cracker. And it will hold whatever you put inside it then. Get rid of those. And as you can see, it just comes apart. Like I say, it's a lot easier if you do two, two at a time. So then all we're going to do is put our fold lines back in. It's quite easy to do because we did pre-fold and burnish. And then these you go away from you. and away so away 
quotes and away. Then what we're going to do is we're going to fold this and where you have got this mountain valley fold you're going to go from the corner up to the score line and from the score line up to the centre. It's hard to see. So we're just going to do a little, a little triangle. And then fold the next one. And then from the outer outer score line to the centre, outer score to the centre. Don't worry if they're not exactly even, because it doesn't, doesn't matter too much. Don't forget your last one here. So fold it up and cut up. And then at the other side, without it folded, you just need to do one here too. Now, if you bought a punch board when I showed you all how to do the um, folders. You can use this to make these little cuts. So all you would do, uh, let me think, you have to do it this way on the non-laminated side. You would slide it in. I don't know if you can see. But here, you need to line the centre score line up with the centre of this. So just line it up and punch. You do need to give it quite some welly because it is going through that laminated layer as well. So you would fold, pop it back in. Punch, fold, pop it in and as you can see you get a beautiful shape with this but I've done one this end way and one the other way to show you that you, you know you can do it with scissors you don't need this little tool. This does give a beautiful finish though so it is um, quite Quite worth it and don't forget to do the end one as well there we go so as you can see these are my lovely gaping diamonds and this gives you the beautiful shape so we don't need these bits so you can just snip these away You can leave them in if you want, but I just find it's a bit too bulky. So we'll just remove those. And then, just make sure I get my tape on the right. Yeah. We're going to run some tape. Now I'm using the red liner tape, and I have found that it, it holds on the matte lamination really well. It's not so great on the glossy laminating sheets, but it is great for, for the mat. So any double-sided tape would, would work. So just snip that away. Last one. Off. 
get a pokey tool. I'm just going to burnish it first just to get any air bubble out. I'm just going to trim those because I've not done a very good job there, have I? There we go. And that side. Okay, so we will remove this tape. And if anybody's got any tips on how to get this stuff off, please, please message me and tell me because I struggle like crazy with this stuff. I love it because I love the strength of it and the durability, but I can never get it off. So, again, I do apologise for just <laughs> making this look much harder than it needs to be. Just myself and red liner tape don't get on. And all I'm going to do is fold this over. Fold this over. So you need need to line it, line up your ends first. Because you want those nice and gosh, you can't see my, my fold line. Okay. And then that one should just seal nice and flat. Again, just give it a bit of help to sit to stick down and then what we're going to do is we're just going to push these in and as you can see because it was all scored it all goes in beautifully. I don't know what I've done there, I've not lined it up very well at all so I'm just going to snip, snip that off. So as you can see, it doesn't matter whether you do. Why won't that go in? There we go. It doesn't matter whether you cut your own little triangles or you use use the punch board. So making sure your seam is at the bottom. Get some ribbon, and I have just threaded some little bells on and I've left them to one end because what we want to do is we want to tie a knot first of all, pull it in tight making sure it's all square and then slide your bell down onto your, your knot and then tie your bow but tie it underneath the, the bell if that makes sense so your your little bell sits sits nicely on top they're a bit long just them until you're happy and then need sharper scissors. Oops, sorry. That's still a bit long. Okay. Just faff until you're happy. I'm sorry I'm making this look so difficult, but I have arthritis in my hands and fingers. And I also have carpal tunnel in both wrists, so I really struggle. It's not this hard, it's my hands. But I refuse to give in to it, and it's not going to stop me doing what I love to do. But this is why sometimes it can look as though I am struggling. underneath the bow and then it gives the the illusion it's actually sat on the top 
have bows upside down, isn't it? Bows never go right when you're filming. Nothing goes right. <laughs> so, just trim. So there you go. There is your basic cracker. Obviously, you'd fill it before you you put your bows on, and then where have I put my topper now? Here he is. So I have used one of the fabulous new foxes. This is from um, Fox Set. Oh, I don't know if it's one or two now. Um, but it's the smaller, the smaller of the foxes. And all I've done is stamped it on a piece of the, the Dreamscape paper and I've raised it up on a foam pad. I've just cut this, this, um, this is just a scallop punch that I had. Just thought it added a bit more dimension and then we're just going to pop that on the top. And just to show you, I'll just grab it, sorry it's over here. This was the first one I made. This was a prototype. I think I actually prefer the smaller the smaller topper but I don't think that looks too bad and I really wanted to use one of the new foxes so there you go a lovely little um, cracker box and I'd love to see if you make any okay thank you bye bye